Let's take a look at what Ilford Ortho Plus really looks like. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Here we have Tri-X in blue, Ilford Ortho 80 in red. We can see that our straight line is fairly straight. It flattens just a little bit in the uh, lower highlights, but then maintains a straight curve all the way through there. The toe is much sharper than we have seen with other Ilford films, surprisingly. So I think we're going to have good tonal separation in the low values. Overall, uh, it's a pretty good response considering it's orthochromatic. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what these prints look like. So let's go ahead and skip forward. All right, here we have Ilford's Ortho 80 roll film. Uh, this is available in 35 millimeter, medium format, 8x10, 4x5. Uh, and it's a pretty decent looking film. I mean, if you look at the differences here, there are some clear differences in how things are rendered, but overall, it's surprising how pictorial this film appears. So we've got our Tri-X, we've got our Ilford. Uh, immediate oppression. It's actually fairly close up here. It's closer to what Kodak renders than what Ilford tends to render if you've seen some of my other 
comparison videos with Ilford Films. Um, I find that the separation of highlight tones is less in Ilford Films than Kodak, but in this case it seems to be pretty close. This is at 80, uh, 80 speed, so I did get full film speed from this in my stock D76 following ISO standards, so that's good to know. We got pretty much the exact same highlight contrast, so overall contrast is identical, but what we can see right here in our spectral response that we are getting an orthochromatic response. So just to show you, here is the card that I photographed. So our red patch became extremely underexposed. Our green patch a little bit, but blue came out the same as uh, cyan, magenta. Um, the dark skin tone came out a little darker, but it did over here with the Kodak as well. So um, that's because it does have a little bit on the red side. So response, definitely orthochromatic. Uh, at some point in the future, I'm going to be showing this in relation to the Raleigh or Raleigh, however you want to pronounce that, uh, their ortho film. Um, and because of the response we saw from it, the Ferrania P30 as well. But until then, let's go ahead and look a little bit closer at the details and grain structure of the Ilford Ortho 80. All right, here we are on the first section. Uh, we can see that we are finer grain than Tri-X, but for an 80 speed film, I'm actually surprised it's not even finer because it is technically two and a third stops slower. But we are getting fantastically sharp detail. We can see that in some of the skin texture under the shaded side of the eye. Uh, but what we are also seeing is just how the uh, redness in my skin on that part is just underexposed when the highlight in the eye seems uh, pretty much identical. So our whites are coming out the same, but reddish areas are not. Here with the shoulder uh, against the background, we can see that grain texture a little bit clearer. It is still pretty nice and smooth. We can see the tonality through that shirt pretty well, uh, how it's transitioning from deep shadow to mid-tone looks pretty good. All right, here on the lit side of the shoulder, we are getting really excellent sharpness and detail. Uh, the ribbing of the collar is extremely sharp. Very small fuzzies of the fabric are coming out uh, pretty obviously. The texture of my skin is apparent. I would say that's from the red being uh, underexposed due to it being orthochromatic. Is just making the fine texture of the skin more apparent. So not a bad thing for portraiture. I know it's not necessarily used for portraiture a lot uh, because it accentuates the redness of the skin. But quite frankly, for guys, at least, you know, women maybe not, they, they like smooth skin, but um, for gentlemen, if you really want to accentuate skin texture, this would be a fantastic film to use. The uh, rest of the shirt has excellent sharpness and detail. All right, and here we are on the close-up of the face in general, and again, fantastic sharpness and detail. We have excellent gradation from uh, whites to mid-tones. The way that it renders the skin texture is just really, really good. I like it quite a bit. A um, bit slow, but with strobes, that's <laughs> really never a problem. Overall, fantastic film. A little bit different look than your standard panchromatic, obviously, but uh, I think if you wanted to shoot with this, you would not be disappointed. You're going to get the exact same high quality film that you would expect from Milford, and it just has a really unique look but not as extreme as i think i really kind of expected i really thought that blues would be much lighter than they are and not necessarily neutral the way that they are 
but the reds really are being underexposed as I would expect in orthochromatic. So yes, it's ortho, but it's kind of a subtle ortho. All right. That's it for today. I hope that helps you get an informed decision in choosing your film. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon page or my merchandise page down in the links below. All of your support goes to producing these videos, and so if you get anything out of it, that can just help get more content. So thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.